fish biryani we will be using about 600 grams of boneless fish fillets and about 300 grams of long grain basmati rice you can find a detailed list of all the ingredients in the description box the main flavoring agents for our fish biryani include saffron mace nutmeg black cardamom and some bay leaves We shall now cut the fish fillets into bite-sized pieces while deboning it. Uh, ensure that no bones are stuck in the fillets. Uh, uh, if these bones are stuck in the fillet, uh, 
we can unsuspectingly swallow it and it can get stuck in our throat which can be very harmful to us. Codfish fillets or even halibut uh, fillets will taste good uh, in this fish biryani. We are using sailfish fillets here. Uh, you can also use uh, salmon or any other sea bass uh, fillets for this uh, uh, fish biryani. Uh, but just make sure they are deboned correctly. Even channel catfish fillets will taste good. Once we have uh, cut the fish fillets to the required sizes uh, and making sure that there are no traces of any bones in the fillets, we will go on to prepare the marinade sauce. Take uh, about uh, two or three pieces, uh, three pieces should be nice. Take about three pieces of uh, these uh, bite-sized fillets we have prepared and uh, we shall slice them thinly to be fried uh, crisp and uh, we'll use that for together with the other ingredients to garnish our uh, fish biryani. It will taste awesome when we do that. Let us take 1 tablespoon coriander seeds, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon fenugreek seeds and 1 star anise. Add about uh, 3 cm of uh, cinnamon bark, uh, 3 cloves and uh, 2 green cardamoms. We shall throw all these spices into a frying pan and start dry roasting them on medium heat. Once we start getting a very nice aroma, we will take them out from the stove, put them aside to cool down. Once the spices have cooled down to room temperature, we shall throw them into a dry mill and grind them into a fine powdery mixture. We shall now throw in all the fish meat which we have deboned nicely into a mixing bowl. Add in one whole cup of yogurt. Top up with the finely grounded spice mix powder. We shall now mix all this together. Do not add any salt at this point. Make sure the fish fillets are coated well with the yogurt and spices. Take about 70 grams of coriander with roots still attached. Wash thoroughly under running water. Making sure the coriander leaves and the roots, especially the roots, uh, get cleaned off of any impurities and sand. Get 4 garlic cloves, 3 cm of ginger and chop off the root end of the coriander stalks. Let's clean and uh, chop one medium sized red onion into thin slices. Throw in the chopped onion slices into a container of a grinder. Ginger, the garlic cloves, coriander roots nicely washed and cleaned. Pack all the ingredients snugly into the grinder container. Add 2 tablespoons of mineral water. Close the lid of the container, mount it on the grinder and uh, let the machine do its work. Choke can harass the grinder a bit if it's stubborn. 
Aha, uh-huh. that's the way to go. Now it seems to do its job nicely. Top up the fish fillets with the mixture. This is really going to taste awesome when it's ready. Use a wider spatula to stir and mix evenly. Marinate covered in room temperature for at least 2 to 6 hours. Let's take the remaining coriander. Chop the stalks like so and keep them aside. Once we have uh, chopped the coriander stalks, we shall now uh, chop the leaves. Okay, the remaining uh, coriander leaves uh, into about uh, 2 cm lengths and put it in a bowl. Take about 20 grams of fresh mint leaves. Roughly chop the mint leaves into small tiny pieces like so. Put the chopped mint leaves together with the chopped coriander leaves and give them a good mix. Take a slice of uh, sandwich bread and chop off the crust. Once we have uh, removed the crust, uh, we shall uh, chop the uh, slice of bread into uh, tiny cubes. Like so. Uh, put uh, one tablespoon of uh, ghee or clarified butter into a frying pan. On low heat, let's fry the chopped up breadcrumbs to make some crispy croutons. Once crispy and golden brown, we shall keep them aside. Soak 6 almonds in water for about 2 hours. Remove all the skins. Pound and mash using a mortar and pestle. We shall add 2 tablespoons of water one at a time and make almond milk. When the almond milk is ready, keep it aside in a bowl. The fish meat has already marinated for 2 hours. Let's mix in. A 1 teaspoon of salt before frying it. This way the juices in the fish cubes uh, will not ooze out while in the process of marination. Let's stir in the uh, salt so that all the fish parts are coated nicely with the salt. Add uh, enough uh, cooking oil in a frying pan to deep fry the uh, marinated fish cubes.
let's uh, maintain our stove on high this process of uh, deep frying our fillets our marinated fillets in the very hot oil will ensure that all the the sides of the uh, fillets are, are cooked uh, and the juices are sealed inside the fillets when we uh, make the gravy uh, we are after after frying this we are going to actually make a, 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 a stew a thick stew out of this uh, using this uh, fillet so we must ensure that all the juices are still intact when we make the stew this is the reason we are going through this process immediately remove the fillets from the hot oil once the sides of the fillets are seared well so that the juices can be retained inside uh, it doesn't have to be really cooked inside put about uh, three tablespoons of ghee or clarified butter in a heated up frying pan split about 10 to 15 cashew nuts and stir them in once they turn light brown pick them up into a sieve and keep them aside into the remaining ghee throw in about 15 raisins once they are puffed up and golden brown pick them and keep them aside clean and chop two medium sized red onions and throw them into the remaining ghee add quarter teaspoon salt add up two tablespoons of cooking oil fry till golden brown tilt the frying pan and push all the fried onion to a side so that the oil starts to separate remove the fried onion slices in a sieve and keep them aside mix the very thin slices of fish fillets with some leftover marinade we shall now fry the very thin slices of fish fillets which have been very well coated with the leftover marinade in the same remaining ghee oil which we used to fry our onions earlier Once they are fried and done, remove them in a sieve, cool them down and snip them into tiny strips and keep them aside. In the same pan, add 4 tablespoons of cooking oil. Stir in about 2 to 3 cm of cinnamon bark. 2 bay leaves, 1 star anise, 2 green cardamoms and 2 cloves. Stir in 10 raisins. Stir in the maize and grated nutmeg scrapings. We shall now stir in the chopped coriander stalks. Clean and uh, slice 
one medium sized red onion like so and throw them in. Stir and saute these ingredients. Add some water to about 10 raisins, mash them nicely and throw in the mashed raisin mixture. Add about 20 grams of dehydrated mint leaves. Stir them into the mixture. Stir in a handful of that uh, fresh uh, chopped coriander leaf and uh, fresh mint leaf mixture. Crush and uh, pound one black cardamom and throw it in. Stir and uh, mix thoroughly. Stir in half teaspoon turmeric powder. Stir in one tablespoon tomato puree. Stir in the remainder of the leftover fish marinade. Wash the container of the fish marinade with one cup of water and stir it in. Stir in half teaspoon of salt. Let us now stir in 3 tablespoons of the almond milk which we have prepared earlier. We shall now stir in the fried pieces of fish fillets. Stir in quarter teaspoon of dried mango powder, which is also known as amchur. The curried fish is ready uh, for the layering of the biryani. We shall now remove all the fish fillets with the gravy, leaving behind just a little bit of the thick gravy to prepare a very spicy sambal, uh, a finger licking dipping sauce. To the remaining gravy, we shall add 1 teaspoon red chili powder. We are using Kashmiri chili powder to give it a brilliance. Stir in 1 quarter cup of mineral water. Stir in half teaspoon of crushed black pepper powder. Stir in slices of one ripe red chili for more heat and flavor. Stir in 1 tablespoon of granulated sugar. The spicy finger licking sambal or dipping sauce is ready. Heat up 2 liters of water in a pot. Add in 3 bay leaves, 3 cm cinnamon bark, 1 whole black cardamom, 2 green cardamoms, 1 whole star anise, 3 whole cloves, 2 teaspoons salt, 
stir and mix add 2 tablespoons of lime juice 1 teaspoon heaped granulated sugar quarter teaspoon spice powder reserved from the roasted spices we grinded earlier for the fish marinade stir in and mix evenly once the concoction comes to a steady ball we shall add in 300 grams of long grain basmati rice which have already been cleaned and soaked for half an hour stir from the bottom of the pot mixing the rice well into the concoction cover and simmer till the mixture comes to a boil since we are only doing a small portion there won't be enough substance to hold the heat together while we do the layering as such we want to ensure that rice is cooked to about 90% done once the rice is cooked to about 90% done we shall uh, toss the rice into a a uh, sieve or a colander we shall quickly divide the rice into two portions in a large basin or a plate or a platter keep handy in a small bowl a few strands of saffron soaked in lukewarm water stir in the saffron mixture to one half of the rice for a beautiful pastel yellow tint and an awesome light aroma we shall now lightly turn in some ghee into our rice portions so that the rice grains do not stick to each another and maintain their individual fluffy creamy structure stir in the ghee gently with a spatula avoid breaking the long grains for those of you who do not favor ghee you can use any other oil of your choice but if you want to really taste the authentic flavors of a good biryani then you must use some ghee pull out the three bay leaves from the rice and place them in the center of a thick bottomed vessel like a fairly large uh, casserole set as this is going to be a dum biryani uh, we will start layering all our ingredients that we have prepared uh, one by one we'll start with uh, about uh, uh, one third of the rice which we have prepared we'll follow up with uh, spreading all our fish and the gravy evenly uh, as the second layer Once uh, we have layered the fish and the gravy, uh, we shall top it up uh, with another one third of the rice. Now let's take about two thirds of the chopped coriander leaves and uh, chopped 
mint leaves mixture which we prepared earlier and do a layer. Thinly slice one medium ripe tomato and spread them over the uh, chopped coriander and uh, mint leaves. Let's take about uh, two thirds of the fried onion slices which we prepared earlier and uh, layer them on top. Let's uh, now take the remaining one third of the rice and uh, layer that on top. Come, let's prepare our special fish biryani garnishing mixture. In a mixing bowl, add the remaining fried onions, the remaining chopped cilantro and mint leaves mix. The cashew nuts and raisins we fried in ghee. Some thinly sliced pineapple pieces, you can even get the canned ones. Some finely diced ripe tomato pieces. The strips of a crispy fried fish. and the ghee fried bread croutons. Give all of them a very good mix. Let's spread our garnishing mixture as the uppermost layer of our dum biryani. Prepare 30 milliliters of fresh milk. Uh, it is about uh, two tablespoons full. Use a back end of a spatula or a ladle to make an incision in the center of the layers of uh, biryani we have prepared. You will be able to feel the bay leaf at the end of the incision. Pour the 30 milliliters of milk inside there. We should have some uh, almond milk uh, left over from uh, the preparation we made earlier. Pour that uh, almond milk into that same hole. On the stove to the lowest heat setting available. Our fish biryani is ready for the dump process. Let's put it on the stove. Cover the pot tightly with a heavy lid. If you can't find a heavy lid, uh, put something heavy. Maybe you can put a basin of water on the lid to make sure that very less uh, vapor uh, escapes from the pot when we are uh, in the dump process. Cook covered on low heat for about 5 to 10 minutes. If your heat, your stove is high, 
you will burn the biryani. So be very careful. Today we prepared a small portion biryani. So the whole idea behind the dump process is to ensure all the cooked ingredients we layer together blend well to give us a flavorful authentic tasting fish biryani without any added aromatic essence. Our sailfish biryani served with some cucumber salad and a finger licking spicy dipping sauce. This weekend, if you are really free, try out this awesome tasting authentic fish biryani with your loved ones. Rest assured, like me, every one of you will also get an overdrive in your taste buds.